Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm taking a look at something really fun. So this is a brand new transforming mecha line by Kotobukiya. So this is part of the usual modeling support goods, which is the MSG, which have been around for a while where you can get a whole bunch of different cool weapons and stuff. But this is the variable frame system number one, Garuda Gear Beluga. So I guess the simplest way to put it is, this is pretty much like Kotobukiya's frame arms line of mecha kits. This is brand new, and what makes this different is it does feature a transformation to a flight form, referred to as a fighter mode. And I have built this already and I have pan lined it and I've played around with it a bit, so just to kind of sum it up a bit. First off, I went into this a little bit skeptical because when it comes to Kotobukiya's kits like frame arms, in the past, I did find them to be a little bit finicky and a little bit on the loose side out of box. Now, I have never built any of the recent frame arms. That's something I really need to get around to. And if you're wondering about other aspects about this particular kit, size-wise, this comes in around 1-100. It does not say that in the box, but if you stand up beside a frame arms or beside a Gundam model kit, that is the zone it's going to fall in. It's slightly taller than the RX-78 II Master Grade. And I have to say, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the build of this, and what I got in the end has me very, very, very impressed. It's rock solid, it's awesome, I have not yet tried out the transformation, but it feels like everything should be perfect here. This was once again sent on to me from those awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan, so if you do want one of your own, this costs around the $48 or Euro region, which is pretty damn good, honestly, and the link is down there in the description. So I guess that's enough about the intro, let's get right into the review with the build. So before I go any further in this review, I am super impressed by this kit. It's been a long time since I've seen anything by Kotobukiya, and they've come a long, long way. It ticks all the boxes, it looks fantastic, builds easy, no fitting issues, it's rock solid out of box built and it just looks damn cool. So my question to you guys is, if you've built any recent, and I'm going to underline recent, Kotobukiya Mecha model kits and you thought they were awesome and would recommend them, what are they? Drop it in the comments because I think I feel an addiction on its way. So because this is a kit that I've never built before, or a style of kit I've never built before, this is the first of its ilk, I guess, I'm going to do something I've done a couple of times before with something brand new to me, which is a bit of a build log. So while I'm building it, I don't forget to say anything. But I will mention I did forget to plug the mic in when I started this part right here. So the gist of what I, what I was saying was, this is primarily made out of ABS plastic, which is really rough and grippy, I guess, which means it's good and strong does have a nice sheen to it if you like shiny, if you don't, it does look crazy shiny. The inner frame on this doesn't necessarily look like, well, mechanics. This doesn't look like the inside of something that functions. This is more just a frame to hold a model kit together. We do have a little bit of detail, but nothing that looks too drastically, well, industrial. Like, there's no pistons, there's nothing that looks like it functions inside of it, so not really a scale model of a frame per se. Same goes for the foot, and when you attach on the armor, it all feels really, really good. It clips on really well, it looks nice, it's a lot more structurally held together than what I would have seen in the past with the frame arms kits. Now, I've only ever seen or OG original frame arms kits, which fell apart a lot. I've not seen them since they adjusted the frame, but I mean to get around to taking a look at them sometime. So now that I've actually got the legs completed, this is what we have. So just to kind of change the two legs up, we've got a couple of things that kind of flip between the two. So this little circular segment here, we've got one of those for both sides to actually change whether it's a right or left leg. The other op well, optional, I guess, changeable part that we have is these little fins right here. So this pops on like this. On the other side, it goes onto the other side of the leg. And around here, we just have a cover for the inside aspect of the leg, which just covers that segment up. These are very nice. So far, this is holding together very, very nicely. Again, this seems to, oh wait, no, we got a nice little moving knee segment here. This is pretty cool. Can't wait to see where this kit goes from here. So now jumping right on into the waist. I've built both halves and I actually find this is quite interesting. So the front segment right here 
is this little part here that closes up like so. I'm not sure if I mentioned it yet so far, I probably did in the intro, that this is a transforming kit, which is very interesting. So something like frame arms, but it does transform. This is obviously where the legs plug into, these can pull outwards, and this is called a variable frame system, so I assume you can pop it together with whatever other Kotobukiya parts you want from across their MSG and frame arms line. So I'm just going to stick this part in here, that's where it goes, and this whole part wraps up and around that nice and tight, and there's our waist unit. Might as well throw the legs in so we can see what- no, there's something else to go in there first. Anyway, on to the next part. So now moving into the torso and there's a lot going on in here because of the transformation gimmick. So this is going to be a part that makes up the chest and we do have this little bit of a sliding gizmo inside there that we're going to see what that does very very soon. That then sandwiches in, everything holds on very very tight which is nice. Now we've got this little bit of a section right here. I'm just going to show the way this slots in there and moves up and that Right there up top is going to be the joint that makes the neck. So you can kind of see the torso. This is it front facing the way it's building up. Okay, so continuing on with that body, I've got the rest of the bits cut out. This is where I left off. And then we've got some parts for hopping onto the sides, kind of giving us wherever we're going to probably attach the arms on there. Once you have both of those on, we've got a little bit of armor that squeezes in between the two of them so there is the armor up front neck right there we then have some arm segments that attach onto those little parts that are sticking out they move up like so so this is getting a little bit more torso looking and then the final parts to attach together is this little segment which attaches on to the front just like so extending the front out like that and this segment right here which i assume is just extending the torso according to the instructions it plugs in there and we've got a little bit coming off the back which I'm not sure what it's for yet but we'll find out soon enough. So now moving on to the arms and once again kind of looking a bit like a frame arms and I'm pretty sure the hands we get in here are most definitely the ones you would have seen with frame arms. So anyway the arm assembly first is the frame, this bit pops up on here like so, this bit right here gets us ready for the hand and then the hand pops on like so so there is the arm the frame of that get that in a little bit closer so you can see a good look at that so that is nice but once again not really with the kind of mechanical detail or anything like that it's just a frame for some armor and speaking of said armor first off we've got some shoulder armor it just pops up on there with a poly cap attachment it's a bit open up top so then we pop this little segment on here for a big nice flared shoulder Got some armor then that pops onto the sides of the arm. Everything so far is super great the way it attaches. Like the older frame arms I would have built before, the armor would just pretty much instantly pop off. Kotobuki has definitely come a, f well, a long way. This, this is impressing me. Finally, then we've got a little bit of armor from the back of that arm. This can actually move out as part of a kind of weapon that doesn't seem to be in there just yet. And lastly then, this little hexagonal piece pops in there just like so. So there we go, that is the arm. This part of the frame stays bare. Pretty cool though. Alright, so next up on to the head, which isn't really all that many parts. So, we've got some absolutely tiny pieces and the clear segments around the eyes, or should I say that make up the eyes, don't actually have any black or anything around them, so you may want to paint that. That is how everything slots together inside of the head before we sandwich on the other half. So the ball joint cup in there, that is a poly cap. Just slap the other side of the head on a little something like that. We've got a clear piece of, well, a blue clear piece that pops into the top of the head like that. That then attaches on just like that. And finally, that pops onto the front to finish off the head. And that's what it looks like. So anyway, finally, there's all the elements that will make this up. We've got the legs, we've got the crotch, we've got the body, arms, and there's a couple of wings I threw together in the background pretty quickly. So like I mentioned earlier on, there is no place to actually connect the legs directly in. We've actually got this little bit of a joint that pops in like so. 
and like this around here, it just pops in like that. And that then is what we use for attaching the legs. So the legs attach on like this. And I'll mention everything so far with this kit is rock solid. I'm really impressed with what Kotobukiya has done here. So there's the legs. The body then attaches on like that. We have some joints for the arms. So they attach in like so. The arm then pops into that joint then into the other side. On then with arm the second. Head popping onto the joint up top which actually just collapsed in apparently you're meant to actually have done that earlier on but i wanted to snap together at the end like this but uh hold on there we go the head has been attached and flipping around back we've got a kind of what looks like the nose of a jet that attaches onto that little tail segment that was poking down from the torso like this and then we have a pair of wings that attach on like so and just like so so there we go there is our beluga So now that this is fully finished and put together, there is the full 360 spin so you can see all the detail of this kit. So I will mention besides the usual out of box build, I did panel line this as well. Now I will put a little bit of a warning out before I get into anything else that I panel lined this with the standard marker style panel liners. Not the pore type ones I've been using a lot recently because a lot of this kit is made out of ABS plastic and those ones that fill the lines for you those can crack ABS plastic, so beware. Go with the simple felt tip style this time around. But yeah, this thing is ridiculously impressive. When it is first built out of box, it does look a little bit on the plain side. That is because Kotobukiya have gone with the white on light gray, or should I say light gray on white color scheme, keeping this very, very simple, but at the same time, quite mechanical. This looks great. The only thing that really gives us a splash of color on here is the blue clear segment we have on the top of the head we also have blue clear eyes as well but these don't pop as much as that part up top the vast majority of this kit is made out of a high gloss plastic we've got abs on the inner frame so that is super super grippy it feels great and yeah if you don't like glossy kits you might want to give this a top coat i think it works quite well here and it really does depend on what you're looking for but out of box high gloss the design here is very Kotobukiya, without a doubt. This reminds me of the kit that actually got me trying Kotobukiya first way back when. I don't even remember what it was called. It began with an or. It was pink and very pointy. This has a lot of the pointy aspects too. We've got big flared shoulders, massive pointy wings around back, and this really does have the feeling and look of a mecha that can fly. It is lightly armored, especially around back. The upper arms are unarmored as well around the waist. This has a nice narrow waist to flared shoulder ratio. And we've got a lot of nice angles. When it comes to the panel lines on here, these are very pinstripe thin. These are tiny, intricate, and look great. They're easy to line, easy to clean up, and they pop. They really do. They look nice. They're subtle, tastefully done, and the whole kit is very elegant in its design. This thing is pretty awesome. Also, finally, when it does come to nub marks, this kind of plastic is very easy to clean up. I found even just with the two snip, I didn't need to do anything else. You can see maybe a couple of light spots here and there, a couple of stress marks maybe on the gray plastic, but on the white, I'm getting nothing at all. If I had only one complaint to say personally about this kit myself, that would be that inside of the underside of the shoulders is a little bit plain and a little bit model kit looking. But besides that, this thing is nice, very, very nice, and I'm really liking those hands. Anyway, let's check out what it comes with. So now jumping into the accessories, and here's absolutely everything the Garuda gear comes with. And what we get in here is a pair of beam sabers or beam swords, a beam rifle, three little parts, which are the landing gear for when we have it in its flight form. And we've got a whole bunch of hands. This is everything. So we've got four different pairs. Now let's check it all out. So now looking at the hands first off, and these are incredibly detailed. They're all made out of about four parts each, all of which in grey. Now these are not you well, they're not new for the kit. These seem like they've been in various optional kits and other Kotobukiya kits before, so these are the only things reused. These look incredible though, but I will mention those thumbs will need gluing. I've already lost one of the widespread ones. Not this one, but the other. Next up in here, we've got fists. Once again, these are incredibly, incredibly detailed, made out of four individual parts. There is no movement, I will mention, so nothing flexing in the wrist or anything like that. And so far, looking cool. Next up in here, then, we've got two different types of holding hands. I'm going to assume one is for the pair of 
Beam Sabers, which is this one right here with the tighter grip. And the other one, which is this one right here, is for with the Beam Rifle because of the more elongated slot in the hand. These have a, I think I mentioned already, but in case I didn't, three millimeter peg attachment. So these are not ball jointed. So when they are attached, all they can do is rotate. So even though they can only rotate, if you look into the wrist of the Beluga right here, you can see that this is a polycap with a little bit of a hinge to it. So that will mean your hands can move around. Attaching this in is super simple. It's just a peg into a hole so it can rotate like so when it's in there. And we've got flexion forward and back like so. So simple, but strong feeling and effective. Just glue in the thumbs, glue in all the thumbs or you lose one like I did. They really are just barely, barely held on. So next up in here, we've got the beam sabers or the beam swords. These are very, very simple. So the handle is made up of two separate parts and we have a blue beam in here. And I will mention, if you are used to something a little bit more like Bandai's offerings, this has a nice hefty, well, how do I put it? It's not as rubbery a beam. It doesn't feel like it's gonna get bent as easily. Getting this into the hand is super simple. You just pop it into the hand just like so. And the hand then just pops on into that poly cap just like so simple. So when it comes to the storage, this kit features one of my all time favorite mecha weapon concepts. And that is the fact that the beam saber actually pops on the inside armor of the forearm just like so, which is handy and cool. But it also does mean when it is stored away in there. So when it is popped away in there in its storage point, it is still available for use. So what that means is you're actually able to pop the beam into the beam saber while it's stored in there for a beam tomfa, aka it's able to use the beam saber without having to grab it. Honestly, this right here just makes so much sense to me. Why always have to hold it like a sword when you can just engage it from within the forearm for a quick slash, a quick attack? or even if it was just transforming from its flight form into mecha mode, slashing while it's coming out of that particular form. This is cool. This is one of my all time favorite mecha design aspects and I'm loving that it's included in here too. Or you can just pop out the beam and leave them stored away inside of the forearm armor. So next up in here, we have the beam rifle. This is made predominantly out of a bunch of the same color parts as the armor on the rest of the Garuda gear. And we've got a little bit of gray up front there for the barrel. Now I will mention there is no blue part for using up on the sights right here. I actually colored that in using a Gundam marker. So I just did it the simple way. Just, I bought this brand new. Didn't even realize that I'd have the, well, I would need a metallic blue for this kit, but luckily I just got one. Shook it up as you do and then just blobbed it right onto that lens and cleaned up the excess then with a the hobby knife. So yeah, it looks quite good and it suits the blue on the kit. So lucky grab there, I guess. So as for the moving parts on this, we actually have a rotating gimmick right here, which puts the barrel away for storage. And we've got a little opening segment right here so we can get this into the hand. And I think it's about time to do just that. So all you have to do is grab the hand that you need, which is this one right here with that little bit of a slot hole. You just slot the rifle in like so, and then close this little segment up. Simple as that right there. Of course, well, I will need that barrel out and swinging that out is simple as that. So as for attaching that into the hand of the Garuda gear, it's as simple as everything we saw so far. So just pop out the hand that you don't want and then slide the one that you do into that hole. Super, super simple and it holds on absolutely and utterly perfect. So anyway, this is pretty much the pose we had it in already, and that is exactly what it will look like holding the beam rifle or the rifle instead of the beam sabers. Now I will mention the hands in here are all pairs that are completely, well, the same, I guess is the best way to put it. So that means this is an ambidextrous mecha right here. So if you wanted to hold the rifle in its left hand, if you buy two of these and you wanted to dual wield, or if you want to grab any of the MSG guns that are out there, you can do that and equip them on your Garuda gear. But anyway, that right there is it for the accessories besides the landing gears that we have. So I guess it is time to finally check out the transformation. But to do that, first we have to see what kind of moves the robot mode can bust. So now jumping into the articulation and I'm just gonna mention a couple of things first. This does not come with an action base. The action base I'm actually using, the stand right here is a Bandai Action Base 4. This works perfectly with it as long as you use the 
three millimeter to five millimeter adapter in here because I think that's a five millimeter peg that attaches in. This kit is absolutely and utterly rock solid. The only thing that is a little bit on the awkward side at times is the hands. The hands here can disassemble themselves. Basically when you're moving it around they might fall apart especially at the wrist and thumb. So I recommend cementing all the fingers together the entirety of the hand because nothing moves and why have them fall apart in you all the time. Cement those make your life a lot easier let's check it out so when it does come to the neck articulation on here for the most part it is just a ball joint right here which will give you your big tilt side to side because it's a big ball look up and look down and the side to side as well pretty much everything you could ask for from a ball but we do have a little bit of a drop inside of the neck here which allows this neck to kind of move up like this and down like so which gives you a little more and when the body's actually moved up you can get more of that so that is part of the transformation, but you can actually take advantage of it to get more out of the head. So we've got a super intricate shoulder right here. So we've got a lot of movement, probably part of the transformation. So down and up there. The arm itself can reach extremely, extremely high. We've got some back and forward of the shoulder inside of the shoulder. That's a little bit stiff, but you can get a lot out of it. Full rotation, of course. We've got two points of rotation because this joint right here is almost like... I guess staggered a bit like a crank from Resident Evil. The shoulder itself can pivot up and down on a polycap joint. We've got the full 360 spin at the upper arm, but we also have it at this point as well. And there I lost a thumb. Notorious. Be careful. After that, then we've got the bend at the elbow, which is double jointed and actually can get you more than I was expecting it to. After that, then we have this little segment here, which is just a simple pair of hinges which allows the armor to move out so you can get into everything that's going on in there including the beam saber and the wrist right here like I mentioned before offers rotation as well as some flexion and extension so there is a lot going on inside the waist on this so there's a lot of joints if we move back a bit towards the build this builds up with almost like a chain of simple hinges kind of giving you a lot in the end so what we do have inside the waist then is this crunch up top moving up and down like so, but we also have a rotation inside of that, which gives us a very nice kind of angled ab crunch rotation. It's cool. Below that then we've got pretty much a, well, similar joint as well. So you can bring that back and you can bring it forward just like so. So there is a lot going on angling this around and most likely part of the transformation. This chain of joints then extends to the nose, which is around here like a tail, which once again has a whole bunch of joints allowing you to angle it and maneuver it to, well, match whatever pose you put it into. It's good. It's nice. We also have rotation at the bottom one down here. So everything kind of gives it a nice kind of slinky, snaky, very contorting waist, which can get you pretty much any kind of wild, wacky pose you want, which is very, very cool. Inside the hip, then, we have a very simple mechanism. That's another one of these staggered joints. So we've got two 5mm joints here, which are staggered. So you can actually move this around. So you can actually move this around like a crank. So it, well, it can be at a lower position or to an upper position. And this is actually quite easy to do with the leg on, which is a bit of a shock. While this is off, I will also mention we have an joint which allow this to move back and forward in there. And inside the leg, even though from the outside it looks like you would have very little articulation. We also have a joint in here which allows this to extend out and in. Let's see what it can do. So as for the front word kicks, there it is all the way up to the front and that is quite literally all the way up to the front. That is the awesome aspect about this sort of light armor. This again is a very graceful seeming mecha. So what can it do when it comes to the splits then? And that right there is what we will get. So not the full splits, but still extremely nice for posing. So next up then we've got the bend at the knee. So let's see, we've got one joint up front, which will get us our 90 degrees. And I assume we have a second one. Yeah, we do down back. And that, if I move this finny bit, will bring it pretty much all the way. That's nice. Just take a quick look at that again, because I have the leg off. There's the full bend. And there is the extension. Now I will mention, this also has a bit of a moving gimmick as well. It is not moved by any part it just kind of moves up and out and i assume this is where we'll be attaching the landing gear later on around side we've got this fin which is just attached by a peg so it can rotate round like so we've got a little bit of armor which can also lift up and down like that and we might as well check out the foot but first i will mention we do have a bending toe that bends down and looks nice 
getting the leg on the ground now for the functional movement test. And in case you don't know what that is, it's what can I get out of this foot and leg without moving the foot off the ground. So as it's firmly planted, there's as far as I can get to the back, which I'll move this down so you can see the straight leg isn't too bad at all. And all the way to the front then gets a little bit blocked by this bit, but not so bad. If that wasn't there, that wouldn't happen. And finally, then there is the side. Ooh, not bad. Took a bit of work though. To side pivot. So that's really nice. Also, I will mention we've got full rotation in this foot. There's a lot going on. And everything grips perfect. Nothing has fallen off. Besides the hands, this thing is sheer perfection. I'm impressed. Kotobukiya, doing the good kits. So yeah, dropping this kit into the usual pose I pull off at this point to test all of the joints. This thing kills it, absolutely kills it. Not a single thing has fallen off. This is strong, it's rigid, but at the same time, everything moves smoothly. This is so, so nice. I am so impressed. This is killing this pose, looks awesome. And no matter what pose I've tried to put it in so far, it does it. It does it well, holds it, and doesn't feel like it's gonna fall apart. Kodobukiya, I am super impressed. Now let's check out the transformation. So jumping now into the transformation, and before I actually talk about going through the transformation, I'm gonna talk about the transformed mode, which is called the fighter mode. I am so impressed once again, blown away actually. This legit looks like an actual aircraft, like some kind of unmanned jet or something like that. This has disguised the mecha so, so well. There is some positions you can see the hands around back, but besides that, the legs have really transformed into a kind of very ergonomic or aerodynamic kind of form with the shape of the foot entirely gone. The arms have locked together in a way you can't even see the joints anymore, and we even have the rifle attached into it as a kind of almost tail or dorsal up top. The head has collapsed into the chest, almost Gundam Age style, and this thing looks phenomenal. I did not expect this. The transformation was great too, by the way. Anyway, as for the gimmicks we have when it is in fighter mode, first off, the wings can actually extend out like so into this almost kind of reversed style wing, which looks incredibly, incredibly cool. On top of that, then we're able to open up the nose just like so, and we do have a weapon inside of that, which can tilt out to point in the direction, well, that it needs to point. This also closes up seamlessly as well, so anything that transformed in this, anything that, well, opens or closed, like the nose, it's all seamless when shut. This is incredible. Now let's talk about how it transforms. So the transformation here is impressive, yet relatively simple because it works. First off, you just need to bring down the tail-like segment at the back, which will make the nose later on. We've got this pretty cool switch in the back of the neck that I did mention during the build, but totally forgot about until this point. If you actually click this back, we now can move the head up and then recess it down into the body. Once again, a very kind of Gundam Age kind of way. We can then flip up the armor in the front of the chest. And as you can see, we're starting to create the nose segment of it. Now we're actually able to bring the head down even more when we bring up the second layer of armor from the chest segment that actually fully encloses the head, only leaving that sensor that we had in the top of the head. And now we know what that sensor is for, fly mode. Next up, we spin the arms 180 degrees at the bicep, then bring them back 90 degrees at the elbow so they're pointing outwards like this. What this means now is we can actually raise them up into the shoulder armor to create this seamless arm segment. That is a cool design. I'm actually really, really impressed by this element of the transformation. We then just spin the arm around like so, and then we flip up the wings from behind, bring the arms in underneath those wings, and you can see this coming together. We've almost got a little bit of a jerwalk feel from Macross, but looking a little bit more real world, or less real world, I'm not sure. So next up, we need to kick the legs all the way up to the front, as well as realign the nose to move up with them. We spin them the full 180 degrees then so that they're pointing out towards the back. And next we need to bring the nose segment up to the actual front. Inside the manual it shows this done without the armor attached so that's exactly what I did to get the correct angle on these particular joints. Once you've got it all lined up and reattached on, when you actually raise the legs up, this brings the nose into position and we've got a locking mechanism in the armor to lock that in. Very, very nice. 
Next up then, we're swinging the legs back once again. At this point, we have an unlocking mechanism in the crotch segment that I did mention during the build of this, that I was really looking forward to seeing what it does. And it does a lot. First, it unlocks the legs, but we'll talk about that in a second. Now that we have the legs swung up to the back, there's a very nice mechanism to the feet, which allows them to push in, then the toes point down and the armor from the ankle comes down over it, almost giving these now a jet-like shape, masking the feet entirely. Now that locking mechanism I mentioned inside the crotch, we're talking about that now. Now you can swing the legs up just like so because that little bit of mechanism isn't there anymore. But because it's not there anymore, you can actually swing these outwards. So we've got a very large gap in the crotch when both of them are done, just like what you're seeing right here. Now you grab all that again, and once again, you swing this all the way around so they're pointing towards the front. Now that little segment from the locking mechanism has another effect right here. You can actually attach the rifle into that. And when it's slotted in, hold it up like so. Now this is a little bit loose at first, but when you do actually swing the legs back up towards the rear to be this thing's thrusters, there is a little bit of a segment inside of here that you can lock the rifle in. So the rifle is also playing a functional role in the way this thing locks together, and this thing locks together damn good. Finally then you swing the legs up the rest of the way, and now we're bringing down the wings. There is a peg on the underside of both of the wings that attaches into the upper thigh, making sure this locks together. Now I didn't film this bit, but we also have a locking element in the wings that locks into what used to be the torso. So we've got a dual locking mechanism here, making sure that this locks together, and that is it. This is rock solid yet again. Nothing failed me, nothing was awkward, nothing needed realigning, this just worked and I am blown away by Kotobukiya here. This is a fantastic flight form with probably one of my all-time favorite transformations. I love this. I love this kit the bits. It's that good. So I guess that does bring us to the verdict, and I don't know what to say here. I've built a lot, well, not a lot, lot, but a few Kotobukiya kits over the years. From the Movlove kits that need a lot of attention out of the box, a lot of glue, to the early frame arms, to the mid-tier frame arms before they actually change the frame. And they always give me a little bit of jip. So they were never really nice kits to just do out-of-box builds of. You definitely did. You definitely needed to grab the toolbox, the glue, sanding everything there's a lot to be done in them especially in regard to just how much playability they had you know you want to get something into a pose you don't want to fall apart but they did now hexagear blows my mind hexagear kits i really do love at least the bulk arms some of the more animalistic ones i did find a little bit on the finicky side this takes the rock solid awesomeness of the hexagear kits and adds it almost to frame arms and again, the newer frame arms might be rock solid. So what we've got here is a perfectly beautiful mecha model kit or mecha robot form that does everything you want, all the poses you could ever ask for, and it holds together perfectly. Got nice weapons too. But then we've got a transformation that is smooth, fun, awesome, and has some nice moving parts that just makes everything morph into a realistic looking flight form. This doesn't look like anything but a jet. It's hard to tell there even is a robot in here, and it just, it's fantastic. That's why, even though I don't usually rank Kodobukiya kits, I have to give this Gundarium tier. It is that good. Everything about this is absolutely perfect. Now, if I was to say anything that could be a bit of a down point, there are some colors on the box, on the wings and stuff, which are dark grays that aren't on the actual kit itself. But considering this thing doesn't really have a source material like a manga or an anime or anything like that to derive from that you might be missing some colors from and want to, well to see represented on the model i don't think that really matters this thing's awesome if you can get one i highly recommend getting one especially if you like transforming stylistic mecha this is awesome link in the description and as always i'll see you next time as always, this video and every video would not be possible without each and every one of you guys who watches my videos. And special thanks to those of you who are supporting me over on Patreon and on the channel members, including Caleb Engelhart, Global Frequency Studios, Go Little Rockstar, Gunpla UK Limited, Joe, Kill Me Inc, Lauren Seahack, Orgy59061, and Van Fawn.